All right, I've entitled my message this morning, A Great Lie Detector Test from the Lord. We're going to be reading from Numbers chapter 5 in a moment. Uh, we'll begin with verse 12. Seventeen years ago, 2002, medical science claims to have discovered a new method to determine if a person is telling the truth or a lie. And that was by the reactions of one's eyes. And it was only 83% accurate. Of course, we've had the polygraph test a long time, and uh, there's been a lot of debate as, of the, as to the accuracy of the polygraph test. But especially in our day, they have DNA now that helps a whole lot, and they claim that they can almost, without uh, uh, fail, determine if a person been involved in anything or not by their DNA. However, the Lord gives us a story. He put it in the book, the Bible. I seldom uh, use this as a, a scripture, but there's a lot of uh, object lessons that I want us to learn this morning. In the, this lie detector test we're going to be reading about, but it, it concerns this was actually called the law of jealousy. The law of jealousy, if a man begins to suspect that his wife was being unfaithful to him, then this was a means that they took to determine if she indeed was unfaithful or had been unfaithful to him or not. And the Lord gave us this, so we're going to use it. This is from uh, his word, not mine. But in Numbers chapter 5, we begin reading with verse 12. Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, If a man's wife go aside and commit a trespass against him, and a man lie with her carnally, and if it be hid from the eyes of her husband, and be kept close, and shall be she to be defiled, or be guilty, and there be no witness against her, neither she be taken with the manner. Uh, and the spirit of jealousy come upon him, and he be jealous of his wife, and she be defiled. Or if the spirit of jealousy come upon him, and he be jealous of his wife, and she shall not, if she's not, if she's innocent, she hasn't done anything. Then we can determine that. Then shall the man bring his wife, and this was the instructions. Y'all listen closely. He bring his wife into the under the priest, and shall bring her offering for her, the tenth part of an ephah of barley meal. He shall pour no oil upon it, nor put frankincense of their own, for it is an offering of jealousy, an offering of memorial, bring iniquity to remembrance. And the priest shall bring her near and set her before the Lord. And the priest shall take the holy water in an earthen vessel and under the dust that is in the floor of the tabernacle, the priest shall take and put it in the water. And the priest shall set the woman before the Lord and uncover the woman's head and put the offering of the memorial in her hands, which is the jealousy offering. And the priest shall have in his hand the bitter water that causes the curse. The priest shall charge her as an oath, and say unto the woman, If no man have lain with thee, and if thou hast not gone aside to the uncleanness with another instead of thy husband, be thou free from the bitter water that causeth the curse. This water will not hurt you if you drink it if you're innocent. People don't realize, but their body secretes certain chemicals when they lie that they don't do when they tell the truth. Didn't know that, did you? 
Dr. M. R. D. Hun, who was a medical doctor turned preacher, said that it created something like peritonitis, caused a woman's stomach to swell, and she died. All right, let's continue reading. Let's read uh, verse 19. The priest shall charge her by an oath, and say unto the woman, If no man have lain with thee, if thou hast not gone aside to uncleanness with another instead of thy husband, be thou free. You're going to be okay from the bitter water that causes the curse. But if thou hast gone aside to another instead of thy husband, and if thou be defiled, and some man have lain with thee beside thine husband, then the priest shall charge the woman with an oath of cursing. And the priest shall say unto the woman, The Lord make thee a curse, and an oath among thy people. When the Lord doth make thy thigh to rot, and thy belly to swell, the peritonitis, and this water that causeth the curse shall go into thy bowels and to make thy belly to swell and thy thigh to rot. And the woman shall say amen and amen. She says amen to her own death if she drinks the water that creates the, uh, the poison by being mixed with the uh, chemical that the body secretes by lying. Folk may be careful but tell the truth. <laughs> But this was a, a story that the Lord gave, and he gave it for a purpose and for a reason. But the priest was to instruct the woman of what was going to transpire. Then she drank of the water that he gave her. And if she was truthful, nothing would happen. If she lied, though, her body would produce that chemical mixed with the water that the priest had that brought death. And the woman had the option. When the priest would come and hand her the water to drink, she could either say, wait a minute, if this is going to kill me, I'm going to go ahead and confess. And this is taught, we won't cover it in the, with the scriptures, but this is taught further. Literally, if the man, the husband of the woman said, I'll forgive you, and we won't stone you to death this time, that was a possibility. And that was what she would put her hope on that he, to extend her life. She would confess, and the husband could say, I forgive. Or they would stone her. But if he forgave her, he couldn't bring it up anymore. I counseled with a couple 40 some odd years ago. They had a whole carload of kids in my yard one time when he was, he got on top of her and he was whooping her in the face. I said, what's going on? And the police went slow by my house in my front yard. Dieball, she used to live at Dieball. That's where this, you know, the Dieball police, but they drove real slow. They had already had a run in with her and I didn't know it and they wouldn't stop. And I said, y'all stop. But what happened? And y'all don't know these people. They've gone on to be with the Lord, both of them. But she, I went to their house. I never didn't know for sure where they lived. But I went to their house and tried to, if you will, referee. And they told me what had happened. The wife had had an affair with this her husband's brother. Now, if you think about this a moment, it's bad to have an affair, but with her, her husband's brother. When they went to see their mother, then they wanted to fight all the time, their brothers. But she said, she told me, she said, I did wrong. 
And I ask him to forgive me. And he says he will, but every time he gets to drinking, he brings it back up. Does that sound... Does that sound like what uh, drinking does and so forth? But you know the good news of that story. Both of them lived 40 some odd years and they stayed together. Raised those kids. They got their life straightened out, which was good. I read the, the obituary of the man some three years ago and his wife last year. But they stayed together all, all those years. But if the man would said, I'd forgive her, and then no, he would bring it back up. And folk, that's not, if you're going to forgive somebody, flush it, forget it. Is that right? If you're going to forgive. And thank the Lord he forgives us, doesn't he? But this was a case of the woman. But if she said, hey, I haven't done anything, she could drink freely of the water. And it didn't hurt her because she had told the truth. And folks, this wasn't a 83%, as I mentioned about the, uh, the, the weight with the eyes, effective. This was 100% effective. It wouldn't hurt her if she hadn't done anything. <laughs> it's a pretty good test, isn't it? But you know, if you gave all liars something like that today, <laughs> you may be in trouble. You'd have a lot of funerals, wouldn't you? All right. Truth or a lie? That's what we're talking about. Truth or a lie? And that was a way to determine, at least on that particular subject, whether a person was honest or not. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is truth. Now what's the opposite of truth? It's a lie, isn't it? You cannot add anything to the truth, can you? If you add anything to it, you're going to make it a lie. The truth stands on its own, does it not? But the Bible says about Satan that he's a liar, in John chapter 8, and the father of liars. He abode not in the truth. I ask a question. Is it ever appropriate to lie? I'm going to give you an illustration. We had a wonderful Sunday school teacher here for years, Brother Sparkman. And he'd always describe people and he'd laugh about it. Y'all have to know him to appreciate him. Uh, he wasn't really an outspoken person. But he said there was three ages of people. That was a youth in the middle age and you're looking good. You know when we get old they walk in, man you're looking good. <laughs> now you, are they telling the truth? Well at least I think it kind of hedging a little bit myself. Uh, but it's just a matter of fact. Another, another thought comes along. What if an ugly person says to you, I'm ugly, aren't I? <laughs> How are you going to get out of that one? I'm ugly, aren't I? There's a guy sent me a picture this week on Facebook. I showed it to Linda and she blew her out or just looking, glancing at the picture of the guy. He was trying to do a selfie of himself. 
He did a selfie all right. But think about it. A person says, I'm ugly. And you got this picture come up, you'd have to agree, wouldn't you? Horrendous, you say. Talking about a lie. Linda and I used to go to uh, Abilene and Lubbock to see Chris. When he was a young boy, he lived out there with his mom and stepdad. We made a number of trips. We'd go, we would drive through Temple, Texas. Y'all know where Temple is. When you cross 35 of the interstate coming out of uh, Temple, on the west side of town was a, a bar. The name of that bar may still be there. I haven't been that way in a long time. But the name of that bar was He Ain't Here. Now, some of the phone rings. He ain't here. That the dude is sitting right out there. But wait a minute. You said the name of the joint, didn't you? He ain't here. It's the name of the place. But the one I liked when Linda and I came here 44 years ago, down here on uh, 34th Street was a bar, and they had it named right. Liar's Den was the name of the place. Y'all remember that place down on 34th? Liar's Den. But folk, I want to remind you that the opposite of truth is a lie. And Satan's the father of liars. We just quoted that a moment ago. John 8, 44. Sometimes the truth may be better unsaid. My dad, whom I loved, a lot of times when he's, and I give him credit, he spoke the truth, I don't care who to hurt. But sometimes the truth is better unsaid. Sometimes people won't hear, don't want to hear all the details. We call it TMI, too much information. We didn't want to hear all that, did we? By the way, the Bible says when you confess your sins, confess them to who? To God that can forgive them. It says confess your faults one to another, but confess your sins to God. But back to truth. What about God's plan of salvation? Satan has a plan or many plans, doesn't he? And his solution is you're okay. You're not too bad. Just as good as everybody else. He may even say, go be baptized. Because baptism doesn't save you, does it? He'll say, do good works. And if your good outweighs your bad, then you're going to make it. That's what Satan says. And God has but one way. And I'm happy to tell you it's not through Muhammad. It's not through Buddha. It's not through any other self-made God or man-made God anywhere. But it's through God's only begotten Son. In Him is salvation. In Him alone. And when He saved you, He doesn't do it halfway. He does it all the way. He said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thy shalt be saved. 
not maybe. And folk, that is the truth. But folk, I got to tell you, the next portion of scripture that I want to refer to you, I started to make as a, my main text, but I ran across this and I opted to share the, the law of jealousy with you. Brother Enrique mentioned in Sunday school this morning about how that things have uh, come to pass in our day. And the mention of the sodomites is offensive to a lot of people. Especially the offensive to them. Matter of fact, the news reported a few days ago that in California, they want to do away with the Bible. Especially the King James Version that condemns sodomy. Because they don't like it. But that goes against the First Amendment, doesn't it? Freedom of speech. But they're trying to pass a law because they don't want to hear that what they're doing is sinful. Somebody said, well, don't say anything about that group because I've got a relative or something and I hear this all the time. But let's read. This is about sodomites. The, the, the bottom part, the sodomites. Homosexuals. Romans 1, verse 22. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave them up. Oh, when God gives up on you, you're in trouble. But he gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Then I took the liberty of underlining this next scripture. Who changed the truth of God into a lie. And we're talking about truth and lies, right? They change the truth into a lie and worship and serve the human body, the creature, more than the Creator who is blessed forever. Amen. And then once again, look at verse 26. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise the men leaving the natural use of the woman, they burned in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meat. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not Convenient. Oh, God gave up on them. This morning paper and also yesterday a large article up here at Ohio State University. A medical doctor there, one that treated the students and the, the uh, sports people of Ohio State University name was Richard Strauss, was charged with molesting 177 students of Ohio State University. That's how many charges they've got already. Dr. Strauss committed suicide in 05 because it was brought to his attention. But it, it, nevertheless, the news is in today's paper and also yesterday's Houston Chronicle. The Bible says they changed the truth into a lie. At least they tried to do it, didn't they? Because you don't change truth. Truth will remain true forever. 
Isn't that wonderful? That our Lord is the same yesterday, today, and forever. But what it is, folks, they want you to recognize their pattern of life and they want God to sanction it. Not going to happen. But I'm telling you this, Brother Enrique keeps up with a uh, brother Ander Stephen Anderson who take, who's taken a stand against homosexuality and because of it, 32 countries have already banned him and said, don't come here. And he was wanting to go soul winning. But because of his stand against homosexuality, and folks, that's what it's about. And we're living in that day. Jesus is still the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to him, come to, to God except through his son, the one that died on the cross for all of our sins. But folks, the Bible says, speaking of the last day, Said, as it was in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, so shall it be in the days of the Son of Man. And folk, we've reached the point of Sodom and Gomorrah. No one dares speak about it, especially in politics. You talk about a fellow if he wants to get elected to office. If you take a stand against that pattern of life. You'll get defeated as far as getting elected to office. But, folks, you've got to take a stand. Now, all sin is sin. And the question I want to cover lastly we were talking about truth and a lie. Get a personal question here now. Who all has lied? We all got to admit to that one, haven't we? Yeah. Bible says, if we say we have no sin, we're a liar. And the truth is not in us. We've all sinned and fell short of the glory of God, haven't we? And the beautiful part, he loved us enough that he died in our place anyway. Even though we were liars. By the way, the Lord said, let all men be liars, but let God be true. And how right he was. Here this morning, if you haven't turned your life over to the truth, that means our Lord, we want you to do that this morning. As we stand together, and uh, Brother Enrique's going to come and lead us in a song. One verse. Of the okay. One, two. Yeah. You, can, you can pause it. 524.